Hello everyone and welcome to Edison TV. My name is Jyoti Prakash and I'm a director healthcare at the Edison Group. We are joined today by Sten Sorensen, the CEO of Sereno Scientific, a company specializing in rare cardiovascular and pulmonary diseases with its innovative asset pipeline led by HTAC inhibitors CS1 and CSO14. Welcome Sten. Thank you for having me. So it's been an active period for Sereno with significant progress made across the pipeline. You recently appointed a well-regarded global CRO for the phase 2B trial for CS1. How does this partnership enhance the program's execution readiness? Well, you know, as a biotech, um, we have always aligned with the strong partners to grow from an idea to where we are now with three development programs, of which two are in the clinic and approaching phase 2B uh, for these two assets, CS1 and CSO14. So this is just another step uh, to bring a global, strong and very competent actor to drive our phase 2B program for CS1 in PAH. Uh, so we're very happy with that. And it is a result of an extended procurement to secure the best one for Sereno. Great. Um, you also recently reported the four-month data from the expanded access program, which aligned with the prior CS1 efficacy and safety profiles. Um, can you summarize the key takeaways and how this de-risks the progression into phase 2B for CS1? Yeah, so uh, CSO uh, or C the CU program is uh, an extension of the original study, which was a three-month study with active therapy on top of standard of care and where we saw uh, very intriguing data on the efficacy side uh, highlighting the possibility of a disease modifying ef uh, effect on these patients resulting in impact both on on the pressure on the prognostic uh, reveal risk score as well as the uh, movement of neocard class to to a lighter form of, of heart failure or neocard de definition. In addition, we saw impact on the contractility of the right heart, which is actually the ultimately cause of, of death for these patients, right heart failure. So we were intrigued by the data. Those were signals of efficacy. The real uh, primary endpoint of that study was uh, to document the uh, safety intolerance, which uh, we went through with flying colors, I think. Um, but then, of course, having investigators asking us to please uh, uh, and apply for uh, extended access with FDA or compassionate use, which we say here, upon the completion of, of the trial uh, period with CS1, we couldn't resist but do that uh, because it allows us to get more information for the regulatory authorities, but also it allows the patients to actually and the physicians to actually use our drug in this uh, severe and, and, and deadly disease. So the first um, for uh, the first readout, we were really looking for continued uh, safety and tolerance aspect here, but we also see that the impact is in line with previous data on the efficacy side. Now, of course, uh, we think that the 12 months uh, readout eventually will will be provide even more information. So we're looking forward to, to see that data eventually. That's great. Uh, so moving on to your second asset, CSO14, for which the top line phase one data is expected shortly. Uh, what are your key expectations and how might these results influence uh, clinical or strategic decisions for you? Well, uh, CSO14 is a new chemical entity, and it's uh, very important for that, of course, to be able to go through uh, the phase one program uh, without any issues. And uh, we haven't had any reports uh, or, or data that have uh, uh, forced us to, to produce uh, some kind of a f flag or communication around safety and tolerance. So we believe that they, we have uh, done well or the drug has done well in this uh, um, single and multiple uh, ascending dose uh, study in 48 uh, subjects. So 
we uh, anticipate good data and top line data. We have previously uh, communicated uh, the H2 or oh, H1 uh, or June, I think even, uh, but we expect the analysis to take a little longer. So now we are targeting July for, for that uh, communication and we're looking forward to that. On a strategic level, I should say, of course, uh, when having delivered that and completed that study, and uh, which we did in April and delivered the data, we expect to move this asset uh, rapidly forward towards a phase two program. <clears throat> and we're looking forward to engage partners even for that program. Thanks for that update, Stan. Um, moving on, um, your recent board changes signal increased focus on business development. Um, can you provide an update on partnering discussions for CS1 and potentially CS14, including any ongoing dialogues you may have? Yeah, you know, we are uh, obviously uh, having reached this space of clinical development for two assets and now moving into later stages with those in, in phase two, to uh, b for CS1 and to a b likely for CSO14. And also having this uh, pioneering effort with epigenetic modulation through HDAC inhibition in two rare uh, fatal diseases that uh, where there exists such a high need for better therapy and ideally agents that could address the root cause, which we aim to do. So pathological uh, progress of vascular remodeling and pulmonary arterial hypertension uh, that rare disease mostly affecting women, and uh, for CSO14, then moving towards uh, pulmonary diseases and uh, idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, this time uh, pathological uh, growth of uh, fibrotic tissue in the lungs. So uh, this is attra attracting potential partners to Sereno, uh, and we are having a, a lot of uh, good discussions and uh, we have uh, we went to many events this uh, uh, last year, I would say, last 12 months, and it's been intensified during the spring. So we came, just came back from Boston and we were fully booked there. Uh, I can't give you any details, but we have ongoing discussions with potential partners and uh, let's see where that ends up eventually. You have recently announced a new financing arrangement. Can you touch upon how this supports your runway and aligns with your clinical and regulatory plans? Yeah, we're very happy to continue the collaboration with Fenyan Arena, and we actually added two new investors from Denmark into that uh, uh, structured finance or, or debt financing that we put in place in November um, as an extended one then. And... Uh, so that was really 200 million, uh, of which 75 million was convertible notes, uh, and the possibility to draw down another 50 million uh, with some uh, covenants uh, related to that, which we obtained or reached. So the um, arrangement is uh, 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 pull down of the, those 50, which was already in the plan, so to speak, and a conversion of 25 of the convertible notes. Uh, which reduces our loan with 25, and then we upped the the loan with 25. So this financing is good for us, and it extends our uh, runway slightly in, in the spring of next year into H, uh, Q2. That's great. So finally, just to wrap up, Sten, uh, what are the key upcoming catalysts investors should monitor as you advance CS1 and CSO14 towards phase two? Well, I, first, I'd like to celebrate our progress, actually. So we're very happy with the progress. Now we completed phase one for CSO 14, imminent uh, report from that, the top line in July now. And uh, we have just signed up a, a reputable global actor to run our uh, phase 2B program for our lead uh, candidate CS1 in uh, PAH. And that work will now start in the regulatory process and uh, definition of protocol submission to the regulatory agencies for approval. And we expect that to happen uh, during the fall. And we are also after the top line 
for CS014 uh, going to move in a similar direction, sign the CRO up for the company, and then move that program in the regulatory and definition of a protocol for lung disease. And we're looking at uh, IPF uh, as the target uh, lung disease for that one. So uh, an acceptance of, of, of that protocol during the fall, if we can make it, we hope so. And then these two trials will initiate next year. First, the to be in, uh, in with CS1 uh, early next year in, in the spring sometime. And then uh, just after the summer, we hope to get uh, the uh, IPF study going for CSO 14. So those are the major things. I also think that we have uh, several uh, upcoming uh, partnership um, events and uh, that we will uh, participate to and we look forward to those discussions. That's great. Uh, thank you for take, talking to us and sharing your plans for Sereno, Stan. Um, for our audience wanting to learn more about Sereno Scientific, please refer to edisongroup.com. Thanks again, Stan. Pleasure. Pleasure.